the East Village Association. I want to just thank the candidates here and for participating. I want to remind all of the candidates and all the crowd that we're all neighbors here. We're all friends. We're all people who live in this community and we'd like you to respect the views of your candidate that you support and perhaps respect the views of the other candidates there. And respect in this situation means giving an opportunity for the other candidates to speak, specifically honoring the timelines that we've set as far as the protocol for the debate. And then to those of you that are out in the crowd that have candidates that you support, we'd ask that you refrain from cheering and booing candidates because one, it takes up time for these candidates to give what are thoughtful responses to the questions that are being asked. And two, respect the opinions of the other people that are here. And so I want to introduce the moderator of our debate tonight, which is Alden Lowry of the Better Government Association. And he's been gracious enough to moderate the debate. And uh, I'll just welcome up on the stage and thank you everyone for coming. One last thing. Thank you to Zounds because Zounds provided the uh, mics and amplification equipment tonight, so if you ever need sound things, tell, go to Zounds, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Neil, thanks so much. I uh, want to say thank you to the candidates for being here. We're going to introduce them in just a moment. And I uh, want to say thank you to you. Just very briefly, um, I was mentioning this to, uh, to Gladys, uh, one of the organizers. Um, you guys should be very proud of yourself. Um, it's not every ward, it's not every community that can have one auditorium filled uh, debate, but have two of them. Uh, you had one a few weeks ago, from what I understand, or uh, saw some of it in a very spirited conversation. So you should give yourselves a hand for coming out tonight, but also for helping to uh, provide the environment for having this conversation. Uh, I'm a senior policy analyst with the BGA. The BGA is a government watchdog group, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with us. Uh, so we do investigative reporting, uh, shining a light on corruption, waste, and inefficiency. We also advocate for good government policy. I work in the department that advocates for good government policy. Uh, the BGA has uh, been represented over the years by a logo of a watchdog. You know, you know, we do watchdog work, we have a watchdog for our logo. But uh, we got the bright idea recently to actually adopt an actual watchdog. Someone who can be a symbol and represent us in a very living, breathing, tail-wagging fashion. And that watchdog is Watson. Watson the watchdog. We adopted him for Paul Chicago. This is Watson's owner, Gabe. And so, uh, if the candidates uh, don't mind saying hello to Watson and getting acquainted with him, you should certainly do that. He's almost old enough to vote, I was So, Watson is helping us uh, sniff out corruption uh, and find good government policy. Uh, and if you would like to uh, exchange and talk with Watson, you can uh, catch him on uh, Twitter at follow uh, Watson BGA. Uh, you can also catch him on Instagram at the same uh, label, follow Watson BGA. So he's going to be around this evening. So he's a very friendly dog, very friendly watchdog. Uh, feel free to come up, you can snap uh, pictures with him, pat him, say hello, get acquainted with him, and then on uh, social media, stay uh, connected with him to figure out all the things that the BGA is doing and all the things that he's doing on behalf of the BGA. So, Watson the Watchdog, everybody. Okay, so, I'm going to introduce our candidates and then we'll get right to the questions, all right? All right, so immediately over to my far left, and you're familiar with many of these folks already, I'm sure, but uh, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Andrew Hamilton. Mr. Uh, Hamilton is uh, an attorney, a consumer and victim rights uh, lawyer, uh, been a resident of uh, Ukrainian village since 2008, uh, and owns his own law firm, and uh, he's running for alderman. Please say uh, welcome, give a warm welcome to Mr. Andrew Hamilton. And to Mr. Hamilton's uh, left, we have uh, Rhonda Locke, who's a 10-year resident, or close to 10 years, a uh, resident of East Village, uh, twice elected to a local school council here in the community, president of the uh, Commercial uh, Park Advisory Council, and is a former First Ward staffer. Please say good evening to Rhonda Locke.
To her left, we have the incumbent First Ward Alderman, Proco Joe Moreno, uh, appointed to the post in 2010 and elected a year later in 2011. He is a longtime resident of uh, Wicker Park, uh, been there since 1997. Uh, and uh, pri prior to being alderman, was still active in the community, served on the uh, Jose de Diego Community Academy Local School Council, and also on the Humboldt Park Social Services Board. Please say good evening to Alderman Moreno. <laughs> and to my immediate right, we have uh, Ann Shaw, a lawyer active in public safety issues and a former Cook County Board of Ethics Commissioner. Ms. Shaw is also a member of the Asian American Bar Association of Greater Chicago and a recipient of the Sandra R. Otaka Leadership Award. She is a village, uh, East Village resident for the past 10 years and ran for First Ward Democratic uh, Committeeman uh, back in 2012. Please say good evening to Ms. Ann Shaw. Okay, so as you heard Neil explain, we are at Wells High School. Uh, they are playing host to us this evening, and uh, some of the students at Wells uh, were industrious enough to come up with questions for the candidates, and so we are going to uh, honor them playing, uh, being the home, uh, being the host for our event by leading off with their questions. We have three questions that we picked out from them, and those will be the first three questions that we'll post to the candidates. You had a question, Ms. Long? Um, I was told we might have an opening statement. Is that true? <laughs> That's very, I, I did this in another form. I forgot all about the opening statements. So I believe each candidate gets one minute. Am I not mistaken on that? Yeah, on the time? one minute, yeah. One minute for the opening statements, and we have someone keeping time, right? Judith is keeping time. So remember the ground rules. We're respecting the time, we're respecting each other, and the audience is doing the same, right? Yep. All right, all right. So Mr. Hamilton on the far left, we'll Thank start you. with you. One minute. Thank you. I'm trying to get into 60 seconds. I want to first thank all of you all for attending tonight. Thank the moderator, and I think, I'd like to thank our host. The first ward needs a leader. I'm a leader. I've had experience in the private practice as a leader. I am qualified. I've, I've guided my clients through difficult times. There is tough choices. It required responsibility and accountability, and I've dealt with that, and I've helped out my clients find a proper solution. I'm ready to do that and turn that in from the private sector to the public sector for you. I have solutions. Safety is a concern in our communities, and so is so are the lack of city services. What I'd like to do as far as safety is I'd like to see more police officers walking the beat. I'd also like to hire more police officers. Some issues in alleviating some of our crime. What I, it, when it comes to city services, I'd like to develop a mobile application. So it will not only be better for if you have any problems with the infrastructure, uh, streets, potholes, rodents, whatever. You can download the issue, or you can take a photo of the, of, the, of the problem, send it to the alderman's office, let the alderman follow through and make time. sure the proper time. time. <laughs> I'd love to have your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Ms. Lott, 60 seconds. Again, I want to reiterate, thank you for coming out, and thank you for being interested in learning about this race. My name is Rhonda Locke, and I seek the honor of being your alderman. Um, I am a business professional with decades of experience, but it was the last 10 years that I really found my true calling, my passion. I've had the opportunity to lead a number of organizations in helping to improve our community. I have advocated on behalf of parks, schools, public safety, all with solving problems and helping to bring resources to our neighborhood. Um, but also importantly, I have city experience. I did work for the First Ward office for two years. I know how to get things done. And with that, I pledge to be your full-time alderman, focusing on the tough things, the full tough things that we need to do for the city, but also setting up a responsive office so that your needs are met. How about an office with hours, including weekend and evening hours? But I believe that with my community, my business, my public safety, and my city experience, I am ready to hit the ground running and can serve you. Thank you, Ms. Lott. Alderman Moreno, one minute. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Wells High School, our principals here. Uh, I am very proud of the record that I've had over the last four years working with many, if not all of you on some great successes in the first ward. We need to continue that into the next four years. I'll talk about a couple. One, when you leave tonight from Wells High School, please go by the back. We've got a field of hope. 
I put a $100,000 commitment into changing that. We've got great plans, plans to make that a soccer and baseball field. Clemente has a great baseball team, but guess what? We've got a great baseball team at here at Wells, too, and they need a field back there. So please walk back there. If you got five or ten bucks, bring it in here. Secondly, as our security and our safety is that it continues to lower in the ward. We need to continue to do more. We've got a sheriff station here. I'm very proud that they're there and replaced the CPD. Our numbers are going down and down. We've got to do more. It's not enough to be a full-time alderman in the first ward. You have to be an overtime alderman. That's what I've been the last four years, having satellite offices every weekend, having first ward Thursdays to meet and greet all of you, continue to push our ward forward. Four years ago, we were not in the spot we are today, and the next four years will be even better. I'm looking forward to being your alderman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman. Ms. Shaw, you have one minute. Thank you. So, um, I see many friends and neighbors. Um, this is a four-year odyssey. Uh, we, many of you worked with me and fought with me to save our 13th District Police Station, and there are many of you who are affected by the 19th District closure. Two police stations that not only Joe, that Joe voted to close, but he said it was his proudest moment. And so I made a commitment to the people of our board that I would not give up on the fight for public safety and our police station, and I made that commitment. That is why I'm here today. For, the, for you and for our community and to make it a much better and stronger place. And um, in my introduction, they talked about ethics. I'm a strong believer of ethics. I served, I was appointed by Tony Preckwinkle to the Cook County Board of Ethics where I served for four years. We were the first group to sue a public official, Joe Berrios, for ethics violations. So I feel very strongly about that and also about public safety. And I think an alderman who thinks it's proud to close down two police stations, have a Christmas party in a mental health facility, they don't deserve to be reelected. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Okay, so now to the questions. Um, and I hope that you we're able to get some of your very broad points out in the opening statements, because what we're hoping for is that the responses to the questions will be responses to the questions. They will be specific, <laughs> and they will be to the question. On the risk of being a pest, we want them to be specific and to the question, okay? Did you have a question, Ms. Long? Yeah, um, is there an opportunity for rebuttal? There is, I mean, okay. uh, okay. so uh, we will do essentially a round robin. We'll start with Mr. Hamilton again. Uh, with the first question, um, and that question will then be asked of each of you. You'll have 90 seconds each to ask, answer the question, and then we will go for a rebuttal round for 30 seconds each. Um, and as I understand it, if you do not wish to do the rebuttal round, you don't have to. Okay, but if perfect. you'd like to take Thank those you. additional 30 seconds, you can. Then the second question will start with you, Ms. Locke, and the third question with you, Alderman Moreno, the fourth question with you, Ms. Shaw, and then we'll go back to Mr. Hamilton, okay? Great. Great. All right. Great. Ready to roll? Yes. All right, let's get started. So these first three questions, again, are coming from the students here at Wells High School. Um, and these are, these are some tough ones. So please consider uh, your answers uh, wisely. Mr. Hamilton, we'll start with you. You've got 90 seconds. Do you agree with the mayor's decision to close nearly 50 schools in the city of Chicago? No. I would not have closed 50 schools uh, in the city of Chicago. Um, I, I, the, um, there's ways, I understand the rationale why, but I don't, I, I would have come to a different um, conclusion to get there. We need to cut costs, right? We're in, we're, we, we're, we, keep, we keep on kicking the can down the road. And the, and the way to do that is not to, to close the schools. We need to cut and each and every department, the weakest link. So by cut by closing the schools, I understand they're saving money that way, but that's not the proper way to do it. Um, plus, there's also issues with kids crossing from um, within gang uh, territories. Uh, they have to walk longer distance now to get to school. So it's created more issues and more problems than the solution. So to answer your question, I would not have closed those schools. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. 
Ms. Locke, you have 90 okay. seconds. Um, absolutely not. Um, not to say all of the schools, maybe some of them could have possibly been closed, but I don't think that we did due diligence in terms of analysis. The, the studies are coming out that it didn't save the dollars, but I think you have to step back, and I think that this mayor has been wrong on education policy in total. We need an elected representative school board. We need a board that's responsive to the individuals, to the, the stakeholders, the schools, that does not vilify our teachers. So I think there's a number of things, and also I think we have to step back. I'm glad that we put $100,000 into the Field of Dreams, but this school has had $3 million in budget cuts over the last two years. That's real support for schools, and we have to take a look and step back, and a number of the schools that got closed were within a block or two of a recently opened charter school in the first ward. Uno came in in 2011, three, charter, or three neighborhood schools closed around it. So, and then the other last point I would like to make, the way it was handled. It was announced in March. We have to apply for schools in December. So I think you have to really look at how, how um, you know, affecting the, you're, you're disrupting the life of these families. So I think that you have to put it to where they have time to apply to other schools. So. Thank you, Ms. Locke. Uh, great, very good question, one that's on the top of mind and one that was probably the most emotional uh, experience of my first four years. Uh, as you know, six schools were actually announced to be closed in the, you know, when they have a broader list of about 168 schools. Six of those in our neighborhoods in our ward, uh, we worked it down to one, and that was over at Von Humboldt um, Dupre. Uh, I organized with many of you I see out there, many of you, uh, to keep that school open. Not only did I talk the talk, we actually went out and organized the parents and the teachers. I brought the uh, school board member to Von Humboldt Lafayette and showed them the plan that we had, that counselors and teachers put together, a very broad plan to keep that school open. Um, he came out, reviewed the whole school, reviewed the plan. Uh, it's kind of a hollow victory, but it was the only school of the 49 that closed that the board had no votes on because the community, myself, many of you out there organized around it. I wish I would have had some of the folks up here on stage, instead of talking, out there helping us try to keep Von Humboldt to pray open. Unfortunately, we did not. But we were all out there, and you know as well as I know, how much work we did to try to keep that school open. So, what's going to happen with Von Humboldt to pray, the only school that closed in our ward? We have a plan. Jose Lopez is here tonight, longtime uh, activist, obviously leader in that community. We have a plan to put a community school back at Von Humboldt to pray to put housing for teachers, because we want our teachers living in the neighborhoods where they teach. Secondly, and then also a lab program so they can learn how to teach. Sorry, I'll, help I'll us with you. that. If you didn't help before, please help us with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Ms. Shaw, you have a minute and a half. Absolutely. Uh, what happened was a complete tragedy. It shouldn't have happened. Um, you know, excuse me, I, I, I don't need rude comments from the peanut gallery on this side here. Um, but I will tell you this, I'm with it. So anyway, my point is, is that we have Joe here who voted for the budget that closed 50 schools. So it's not just about a handful of schools here or there, it's about the entire community. The big problem that we have here is we've got money that we're stealing from the schools through the forms of TIF money. And the biggest problem we have is we're not fully funding the schools we have. When we're, one in five of our schools are charter schools, where private investors are making money off our public dollars, there is a real problem. And I think the biggest problem is, is that our Chicago community, we're not stupid. We know that if you... If you're saying, well, we've got to cut the budget by closing the schools, but then on the other hand, right in step, you're opening up these private investor-funded charter schools, then people call that a bluff, and that's not good for our community, our kids, or our people. And so we're starving the kids of great music programs, art programs, wraparound services. A lot of people may not know this, but when I went to public grammar school, I didn't speak any English. And it was through the wraparound services, social workers, speech therapists, that I am here where I am today. So I'm very strongly and firmly believing in, in fully funding our schools and not closing them. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Brief rebuttal. Yes, if, if, if you, you want to do a rebuttal, you have 30 seconds. So these That's are fine. Quick points. Well, and to expand on that, 
What we are, Illinois is the 48th out of the 50th state in spending. We're at the bottom. We need more money from Springfield to fund our schools properly so we can have uh, better teacher to student ratios, more um, competitive salaries for our teachers. So being 48th, and we also need an elected school board. Um, to help guide our way through that, because what's work, what's currently doing right now is not. Uh, is that time? That's time. Sorry, Mr. Thompson. It's okay. Yeah. Keep in mind the question is about your decision. Would you have agreed yeah, with absolutely. Mayor Emanuel's decision to close 50 schools? Please. This is a rebuttal round to that question. Correct. So, yes. Thank okay. You. Absolutely. Um, again, I also would like to concur with Anne. We are sitting on 1.7 billion in tips. Half of that would have gone to the public education, the normal taxing body. So absolutely we have to look at real tax reform. But I also want to do a quick rebuttal. Um, Von Humboldt was one block away from Erie Charter School, something that the alderman's wife serves on the board of. And Uno School came in in 2011, one block away from Lafayette. Two schools that had to close because of underutilization. And the way that UNO schools, so again, UNO school came in, we didn't even look at alternate location. Okay, sorry, I'm out of time. <laughs> I would love for you to talk to Solano Dan Loreno about her role in this neighborhood. And I think a lot of people Absolutely. in this room would love to see you try to go at my wife. Keep my wife out of it. Talk about me, okay? Secondly, <laughs> secondly, secondly, and you've said it three times, I have to rebut this. The city council does not vote on the school budget. You can continue to repeat it to make it true. That's not true. We do not vote on a school budget. We do need leadership in Springfield. We are the 48th. I'm the alderman of the city of Chicago's first ward. But I'm glad Will Gazzardi's here tonight. We fought hard to get him down in Springfield so he could help get the money back to Chicago. So that's, what, that's what we need. Thank you, Alderman. Is that time? That was time. Ms. Shaw, did you want to rebuttal? Yes, actually I do. Actually, Joe is wrong. You, you keep saying you don't vote on the school budget. Yes, you do. It is part of the main city budget that you voted on, no, and that, that included closing the 50 schools. Okay. All right. Thank you to the candidates, Ms. Shaw. Uh, a reminder, again, um, we want to be respectful of the candidates, uh, we want to be respectful of the time, and we want to be respectful of each other. Right? All right. Um, okay, remember, we've got, a, we've got a watchdog down here, all right? No, it's tough. <laughs> okay, uh, on to the next question. Again, this is a, a question from uh, some of the students here at Wells High School. Uh, and this question, we'll start with you, Ms. Lott. What is your plan to...